boat traffic on the main river can be a bother. You really need to look out while you're on the water. Later in the day when I went to target Sturgeon, the, the business of the main river absolutely, absolutely was a hindrance. So boat traffic can be a problem. It creates waves, it murkies the water actually. Those big waves that you get, they're like two feet waves, they're hitting up against the weeds and the banks and it just muddies them and it's almost unfishable at that point. Oh, I lost it again. Waves were crazy. Like it was just constant. So you had one going back and the other one coming this way. So I'm getting I'm getting waves from different sections and like it was like crossing the street. So you couldn't just shoot across the river. If there was a boat coming, you had to judge if you could pet cross the river before the boat came crashing into you, because I always assumed that they don't see me. The waves makes it difficult to detect bites. Those waves are gonna push me right back in. It's not even worth it to be out there, so. That, that's the only thing I was worried about is sturgeon fishing in the St. John River. Then I might be affected by the boats, but I hate sturgeon fishing. I hate it. It's just so pointless and useless. I like, unless you catch a sturgeon, then it's great. Sturgeon fishing is just not fun. I really, I, I really thought I had a good chance at catching a sturgeon where I was, and... Uh, good heavens. I have to put my hand in this bag of just clam meat, and it's just... Oh, Lord, have mercy. It's... Gross. Gross is it gets right there. Okay. I did get a tug, but again, with all the boat traffic, like the line is lurching, the ro <laughs> kayaks are rocking. That was the most frustrating part because a sturgeon absolutely would have thrown me w w way up into the standings. So I hung out for about 40 minutes and I'm like, I'm tapping out. So I was done, I was done uh, using live bait. <laughs> and then I just paddled back after, after I tried it again, but after 40 minutes, I'm like, no, I can't deal with all this boat traffic. It's just ridiculous. Whew. I can size one. Oh, yeah. Jean Mazarol with an 18 inch chain pickerel. Yeah! Uh, look at that. Nice little chain pickerel. Awesome. Brian Cothra with a 9.5 inch yellow perch. Hope we get a bigger one than this anyways. But. I debated on going straight to a spot where I know I can catch multiple species or fish on the way down. So I fished on the way down about halfway and caught a really big smallmouth. And uh, it come out of the water two or three times, and then by the time we got it to stop coming out of the water, we're still drifting down river. Oh, well, no. big smallmouth went under the log, and I went over as we were drifting down, and it cut my line. No. I think that was the first time fishing where actually I was silent and standing up for a minute. I don't like losing fish. It doesn't happen very often. So that was disheartening. And then shortly after that, that's when I decided, you know what, I'm not fishing going down anymore. I'm going straight to that spot. When the plan A goes out, plan B of hard work comes in. Now, because I had such a horrible fish before the first couple hours, it was exciting, but I'm sure if somebody was beside me, they probably noticed that I wasn't hooping and hollering or anything. I, the, the rod nibbled a bit, and then I grabbed the rod, and it stopped, so I thought it was gone, then, then it nibbled again, so I set the hook, and it was a lot heavier than what I expected. <laughs> It didn't fight much though, it was just heavy. So and then, then all of a sudden I come, I'm like, what? I think that's a sturgeon, because it was kind of swirling. Then when I got it in, I got all, I got more worried about losing it, so I got it in the net real quick and. Go, eh? Too bad. Oh, oh, oh. What I didn't expect was the difficulty measuring it, because to get the phone far enough to get the code, the length, and the nose, I pretty much had to stand up and look out of the corner of my eye, and just keep taking capture box buttons and then look at it before throwing the fish back. I thought it might just keep me up in the running in the top five, so my excitement was pretty bland. I was happy to get the sturgeon, but I didn't think it was gonna win me the tournament. But you get any of these species that some people just never target and they just haven't had the tournament experience in a multi-species event to get, and then you get these top 10 guys, they know how to collect some of these, and they do. If you get nine, you may not be first, but you're probably not better than fourth. That was the only thing that I felt that, you know, maybe I should have taken a little more time to pre-fish and 
target some of those smaller species. I think you know I think a catfish would have helped me a lot. Uh, I didn't I didn't try for catfish very really much. Uh, I, I think that would have been better, and I think I probably should have upsized my eel because I don't know if I'm going to catch another eel. And I let a 20 as I said I let a 24 inch eel go probably on a 24 inch eel because I just wasn't going to. Don't need eel. <laughs> At the end of the day, I was pooped and it could go. <laughs> I was too covered in eel slime. I didn't get a sturgeon, but I think I had a couple like smacks on my line from a sturgeon. I can't stop losing stuff. I go to you know hydrate and I take a big sip of my Gatorade and I go to spin my Yeti cap on real quick and you can just give it a quick spin and it normally is quick thread and I put it down and it fumbled and it went in the water and in my head I'm thinking, well Yeti's a quality product. Come on, float. <laughs> It's like it. Oh man, that's what you get. And it, it didn't float, so I gotta replace that. Warm drinks are better than no drinks. I lose everything. It was a good day for fishing. It was a good day for fishing. And I, if I had caught a sturgeon, it would be interesting because every species that Renee and I caught together, <laughs> I caught bigger than them. <laughs> and it was a bunch. I was just good, doing good. I was having a great day catching just this much bigger fish than the other guys were. The midday catch of the 28.5 inch sturgeon proved to be the difference in yet another victory for Rene Peltier. John Kale and Gary Lynch finished second and third, turning in strong performances. Never, <laughs> never satisfied. <laughs> Gotta make up for the striper. So there's still a lot more work to do. So the chipment is, is next. And that's white perch, yellow perch, I believe, for the target species. One of the species I can't get, I can't say which end of the spectrum the fish is on, but one of the species I haven't got is at that end. And I mean at the end. Chipman's a good spot for me. I won it last year. And there was a big prize on the line too, um, which felt great. Now, when you get to Mactaquac, uh, game game plan one and game plan only, probably for most of these guys, is going to be catch a largemouth. It's just one of those species, man. If you don't catch it at that tournament, you're in trouble. Who did this? <laughs> <laughs> is that you, Brian? No, I still don't know who put it. I'm sure I'll find out. Bananas are Renee's best friend, apparently, because he won the whole tournament. And guess what, he caught a sturgeon. First sturgeon I've seen Renee ever catch. So if I was Renee, I'd be bringing bananas on my kayak every tournament. I'd love to eat a banana halfway through the day. It'd probably help with lactic acid in my legs. <laughs> When I got on the water and I paddled to my spot, I was soaked. To tell you the truth, it did concern me, but it was par for the course. My, well, my first thought, I got out of the Jeep and I thought, man, it's a lot windier than I thought. I had pants on, I had a hoodie on, but it was chilly. I'm trying to think, I think we only had one tournament where we didn't have a storm front to, that dumped 30 to 60 millimeters a day or two before the tournament. Like, and, and people were coming up to me on the beach saying, are we actually doing this? Like, you know, I'm worried about the guys that are sitting in kayaks or, paddling around, trying to paddle against the current and that wind. Uh, you, don't, you don't want anyone capsizing. Got back into the car and put on every piece of clothing I had. <laughs> it was cold. Anybody that leaves is going to stay to die today. Got a vivid imagination. 